All right, it's my favorite part of Sports Beat. This day in jazz history, let's hop into the time machine and travel back 32 years. March 17th, 1986, Isaiah Thomas and the Pistons in town. An early look at Stockton to Malone in Carl's rookie year. Wearing those old green and gold, I love it. With 29 seconds left on the clock, Isaiah gives the Pistons a one-point lead with the floater. So it was up to the fastest of them all to save the Jazz. seconds to shoot. Wide open, Ricky Green. Guns good. 16 seconds to play. That play was mapped out perfectly by Frank Lee. So the Jazz take a one-point lead, but did they leave too much time for Isaiah? To pick up Iveroni picks it up. Isaiah to the whole Saved by Green. So the guns two. No! Hey, how about Mark Eaton with the game-saving block? Jazz win 107 to 106. Speaking of Mark Eaton, Rod had a chance to sit down with a former Jazz man to talk about his new book. Mark's Eaton, number 53, being hoisted to the banners over at Vivint Smart Home Arena, March 1st, 1996. And now, from the rafters to our couch, Mark <laughs> joins us in studio. Great to see you. You too, Rod. My Thank friend. You. Uh, 28, 22 years ago, that number was retired. Crazy, huh? I mean, that time goes by. Yes, it does. Every time you go into the arena for a jazz game, do you look up at that and smile? Yeah, it was a, a, a fun night and a great memory and uh, and fun to be remembered, you know, for the contributions you made to the team and, and, and having lived here all these years, it's, it's pretty cool. Now, we'll talk about this year's Jazz team and what they're doing and their push for the playoffs in a moment, but you've been on the speaking tour the last eight or nine years and you've mm -hmm. come out with a book that's going to be rela uh, released uh, April 3rd at the Jazz Lakers game, Four Commitments of a Winning Team. So what possessed you to write a book when you're a speaker? Well, I've, uh, you know, for a number of years, people have asked me about writing a book. A lot of times when you speak and, and you leave, people say, well, we'd like a little more. Like, is there something else I can take home with me? And other than a CD, I really didn't have too much. And so I'd been working on this for a few years, and my wife finally helped me get it over the finish line. <laughs> and, uh, and then John Stockton wrote the foreword for it, which was very nice of him. Uh, so it's a, it's a compilation of, of stories, of my personal stories, my journey, jazz stories, jazz history, along with business examples because I, my audience is mostly corporate groups. Uh -huh. And it's really helping them understand team from the inside out. One of the greatest stories that I've ever heard told, whether it's true or not, I think Frank Layden really pushes this story out, is that you're a mechanic in L.A. and your head was on one side of the car and your feet out yeah. from underneath the other yeah, side, and they said, this guy's got to play basketball. Is that true? <laughs> no, that's not true. <laughs> but the true story is that I was working in a tire store in, in Buena Park, California, and it was right down the street from Cypress Junior College, and uh, the assistant coach there, who'd worked with some big guys, drove around the corner one day at this busy intersection, saw me out there standing and talking to this very short little customer, and was like, put full brake on and, and zipped into the parking lot, and was like, you know, who are you and why aren't you playing basketball? So that began this uh, sort of two-month um, stalking that uh, he did of me <laughs> where he continued to come in and talk to me uh, almost every day about yeah. giving it another try. And so at age 21, I, he convinced me to, to give it another whirl. And in your speaking or in, even in the book, do you use that kind of a theme, taking advantage of the opportunities given to you, whether you go out and find them or not? Yeah, I think it's just it's paying attention and, and uh, when things do come along, not saying no, no, no to them. Because it used to really irritate me that everyone would tell me what I should be doing with my life. Like, I didn't run around the tire store telling everybody else what they should be doing, but everybody came in and said, you should be playing for the Lakers, you should be playing <laughs> basketball. Um, but this coach showed me something different that I hadn't seen before, and he was willing to commit himself to say, I'll be there for you every day, I'll work out with you, I'll show you the yeah. things I can teach you about being a big guy. Yeah. And that was intriguing to me. So that's, that's a part of it. I think opportunities come along all the time. It's just a matter of whether you're willing to receive them or not, and you're willing, if you're willing to take a chance. Yeah, your book, The Four Commitments of a Winning Team, um, is going to be... Uh uh, unveiled on April 3rd at the Jazz Lakers game. Yep. Uh, you're going to do a couple of book signings as well, uh, April 3rd uh, at, at the Vivint, and then April 4th at Barnes & Noble in Layton, April 7th at uh, a couple of Costco stores in Utah. And they can go and find out all this information where? 
Uh, you can go to uh, online to markeatonbook.com, and uh, that's where uh, we've got a, a signing coming up mm -hmm. with, uh, on one night on Facebook on the 28th, I believe it is. Uh, is that yeah, right? the 28th? 20, 29th, the 5 o'clock, Mark, markeatonbook.com. Markeatonbook.com, and so just, if you just follow me on social media, yeah. uh, we'll keep everybody abreast of when the thing is. Back. And speaking of your social media, <laughs> you've put out on Instagram, Aaron Rodgers, the quarterback for the Green Bay Packers, Mark freaking Eaton. What is that all about? I, I don't know. I had somebody called me last night or texted me and said, hey, did you see this, twi this tweet today? Blue and gold that looks like UCLA colors, and it says Mark freaking Eaton on it. I've never met the man. I don't know anything about it, but... Aaron Rodgers followed me today on Twitter, so I'm excited hey. about that. So. <laughs> have, you even, have you ever seen that shirt? No, nope, never have. <laughs> I thought about Googling Mark freaking Eaton and see what comes up. <laughs> and now, speaking of more pictures, Tom Smart, the old photographer, uh, retired now from the Deseret News, has pictures of you on a horse, Yeah. you know, up to your neck in a river. Yeah. Explain that, please. Well, first of all, never go horseback riding with a news photographer who's <laughs> supposed to be working, okay? That's the first lesson. Um, secondly, a few years ago, we were down in the San Rafael Swell, and I took my horse, Big Tim, down there. It was a, a thoroughbred cro uh, Clydesdale cross. Yeah. And uh, we, during, in that little canyon, you have to cross the river like 15 times in 18 miles. And they had gone out and scouted it the day before. Water looked pretty good. Then I show up, apparently they let a little more water out of the dam, a lot of water was a little higher, and Tom knew that someone was gonna get wet at this spot. So rather than tell his buddy that you be careful of this spot, he goes across the river first and sets up his camera. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then my horse steps down in the river and takes one step downstream and we go right down in this big hole. And he's there with his telephoto lens on the other side of the river taking a shot that won him a sports journalism award. <laughs> How do you Thanks. Tr Thanks, Tom. <laughs> All right, let's talk about this year's Jazz team. Let's start with Donovan Mitchell. Uh, is wow. he is he the most dynamic rookie in Jazz history? Because I think the only guy you can compare him to with the minutes played and the way he's playing is Daryl Griffith that you played with. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I, I think he is. And I was talking to uh, Eddie Johnson about this the other day when he was here with the Suns, and and uh, you know he has a serious XM show, and uh -huh. and uh, he said. He said, I tell people all the time how good he is. He said, I don't think the people here even understand what an impact this guy has made as a young, as a young man, as a young player, the poise he has on the court, the athleticism, the maturity he shows in making decisions, and the ability that the, the coach can already leave him out there for 35 or 40 minutes a night and feel confident that he's going to, to manage things well out there. I mean, you look over the history of the Jazz, how hard is it to find a great point guard? Right. One, that, one that gets what the coach is trying to do, understands when to take their shot, when not to take the shot, when to drive, when not to drive, when to deliver the ball at the right time. It's, uh, it's, it's incredible. I mean, I love watching them. Well, John Stockton, his rookie year, he split time with Ricky, Ricky Green. Green. Right. So he didn't have the impact that Donovan. Have you seen a rookie, not just with the Jazz, but in recent memory, to take over a game consistently like he can? No, I haven't. I, I, and I think uh, comparatively, they, the person they r uh, compare him to mostly is Blake Griffin, who had an yeah. outstanding rookie season. But he's a big guy. But he's a big guy, so it's not really the same. Yeah. No. He's, I mean, Allen he's Iverson. A, um, yeah, but a different kind of player. I mean, <clears> you know, yeah. I mean, Donovan Mitchell is all about winning and all about his team and, yeah. and so humble. And, and uh, I just can't say enough great things about him. It's so much fun to watch him play. And some of the stuff he comes up with and, yeah. and the athleticism he yeah. has. I ask myself, I've been around the NBA a long time. I'm like, wow, did I really just see that? Did, didn't he really just go up that <laughs> really? high? And, yeah, really? Yeah, it's, it's incredible. Okay, now to a guy that I'm sure you really love watching as well, Rudy Gobert. He's averaging two and a half blocks a game, 2.7. You average three and a half blocks. Okay, you had uh, 3,064 blocks in your 11-year career. In five years, he has 675. That kind of shows what kind of blocker you were, and he's going to have to average three and a half, four blocks a game, maybe a little bit more, to get to where you were. Yeah, but I, I, I think Rudy brings some other things to the table that I probably didn't possess in terms of his ability to score and get a little more involved in the offense. I mean, I always played with Adrian Dantley or Carl Malone that were main, the main cogs offensively, mm -hmm. and, and the team wasn't really looking for me to do that. And I think Rudy has a few more skills in that area than maybe I did. And, uh, and, and if you started me, watching me dribble the ball up the court, full court, to dunk it on the other people would have been... <laughs> Screaming, I think you did that once in your screaming, career. Screaming, yeah, screaming their heads <laughs> off. 
it's been fun to watch him mature. It's been fun to watch him start to understand the game a little bit more and understand his impact out there. And I think it was uh, glaringly apparent when he was hurt there earlier in the year mm -hmm. how badly the team needs him and depends yeah. on him to be that stopper in the middle. Uh, and I think sometimes, you know, big guys today get a little kind of a bad rap because they'll go, oh, we need guys that can shoot three-pointers. You know, we don't, we don't need the traditional big yeah. guy anymore. And then you watch the impact of someone like Rudy Gobert yeah. and what it does for the team and the confidence it gives them to go out and try and steal the ball and, and make some things happen defensively. Uh, I, I, you just can't say enough about it. I mean, I love watching them play. Uh, the unveiling of your book, the release of it's April 3rd at the Jazz Lakers game. They yep. can, they can the go main there. Con main concourse. <clears throat> yep. yep, they can go and say hi and uh, get an autograph. Uh, yep. book, right? Yep. It's uh, been great to kind of relive and go down memory lane a little bit, hear some more stories, and uh, looking forward to uh, your book and how well it does. All right. Well, thanks, Rob. I'm sure it'll be it. just like you. Thanks, buddy. Big and awesome. <laughs> Thank you.